Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome to this easy edit live lecture for the students of geography. We would like to tell you all today we are going to talk on a very interesting topic and the topic is geohydrology of uh, great northern plains. Uh, so dear friends for this very discussion on the topic we have again with us in our studios Dr. B. W. Pandey. Dr. B. W. Pandey is associate professor in department of uh, geography Delhi school of uh, economics. So dear friends I would like to welcome our guest Dr. B. W. Pandey under whose guidance we would be discussing on the topic Geohydrology of Great Northern Plains. Hello sir, welcome to the Edisset Lecture. Thank you Yitka, thank you. Good afternoon everyone. Today I am going to discuss the topic Geohydrology of Great Northern Plains. And uh, Great Northern Plains of India, which is also called Granary of India, a Granary of South Asia, and sustaining several million population. So great northern plains lying between the Himalaya in the north and the peninsula plateau in the south. The southern part demarcated by Aravli range, the plateaus like Malwa plateau, Bundelkhand, Baghelkhand plateaus, then the Chota Nagpur Plateau and this plain extended between Chota Nagpur Plateau and the Silang Plateau. Friends, the topic is Geohydrology of Great Northern Plains. This topic will cover mainly the relief features, second order and third order landforms of the Great Northern Plains and we will discuss intensively about the drainage system. Drainage is the key indicator of fertility of any plain system. Friends, on the basis of drainage density, the quality of land, land use, land cover pattern determined. As you know, the Gangetic Plain, the Brahmaputra Plain are a very, very high drainage density plain in the world. That's why I have, there are well developed Dawabs, and these Dawabs are having very fertile land supporting billions of the population. The Great Northern Plain, formed by three river systems. In the west, river Indus system, in the center, in the Ganga system, and in the east, Brahmaputra system. So, so this, this is the reason that the great northern plains of India, known as Indo, Gangetic, and Brahmaputra plain, in short term it is called Indo Brahma plain, extended right from the Pakistan foothills region up to the, in the east to Arachal Pradesh, covering almost 2,900 kilometer distance. And uh, on an average, on an average, it is extended between 300 to 600 kilometer width. So in the west, in the west, width is high, going extending up to 600 to 700 kilometer, and it becomes narrow. It becomes narrow in the east. It's less than 150 kilometer in Assam, and even less than 50 kilometer in Pasighat, near uh, Sadia and Pasighat region of Brahmaputra plain. Therefore. The Great Northern Plains broadly divided into three parts. In the west, it is Indo Satellite Plain. The plain extends between Indus to Satellite. These are west flowing rivers and antecedent rivers of Indian subcontinent. In the center, the Ganga Plain 
formed by river Ganga and its tributaries from the Himalayan tributaries as well as the peninsular tributaries. And third one that is in the east is Brahmaputra plain formed by river Brahmaputra and its tributaries. Friends, first of all, I would like to discuss the Indo-Satalas plain. Indo-Satalas plain extended from India including to Pakistan. The river is stretched from Tibet Plateau to the delta of Karachi along the Arabian Sea. You can see the figure. This is the, in total, the catchment of Ganga, the system of the Indus and its tributaries in India. And then these river enter in Pakistan and have a lot of alluvial deposits and form the plain. The indus satellite plain, indus satellite plain having extensive rivers because in the western part of the Himalayas, western part of Himalayas there are extensive glaciers, there is a heavy rainfall, there are western disturbances, valleys of the Himalayas are quite large. So having more, more catchment areas, more water areas, so that the rivers having large catchment area, so having more amount of water. Therefore, the perennial rivers, large size rivers, draining with India and Pakistan and develop extensive fertile plain. The Indus is the main river and the tributaries, tributaries like uh, river Satilas, Bias, river Chenab, river Jhelum and all these river form a different hierarchy. River Indus is the main river. River Satilas join Indus in Pakistan. So Satilas first order tributary to River Indus. Then remaining tributaries join Satilas and later on join Indus. Like River Bias. River Bias and River Chenab. River Bias and River Chenab are the first order tributaries of River Satilas and second order tributaries of River Indus. These uh, tributaries join Satilas, River Bias join in India and river Chenab joins in Pakistan. Then river Jhelum and river Ravi. River Jhelum and river Ravi are the first order tributaries to river Chenab second order tributaries to river Satilas and third order tributaries to river Indus. So these rivers are extended all the way from India to Pakistan and form extensive plain. Friends, I would like to mention here that the alluvial depositional plane between the two rivers 
and that is two tributary rivers. Two rivers and the two tributary rivers known as the Wab. There are five extensive Dawabs in Indus system, Indus Atlas plain. And these Dawabs are highly fertile and have big history of human civilization. The plain between river Satlas and river Bias, known as Bistu Dawab, between river Satlas and river Bias, between Bias and Satlas, Bistu Dawab. And friends, this Dawab, Bistu Dawab, lies mainly in India because river Bias does not enter in Pakistan. So, it is absolutely in Indian territory. Then between river Bias to river Ravi, between Bias and Ravi, this extensive plain called Bari Doab, B for Bias, R for Ravi, between Bias and Ravi or Bari Doab. The third one is between river Ravi and Chenab. Between river Ravi and Chenab, they are called Rachna Doab. Rachna Doab, R stands for Ravi and CH stands for Chenab, called Rachna Doab. And the fourth one between river Chenab and Jhelum between river Chenab and Jhelum called Chaj Doab. CH stands for Chenab and JH stands for Jhelum. Chaj Doab and finally the largest Doab is between Jhelum and between river Indus. Between Jhelum and Indus and between Satalas and Indus, between Chenab and Indus, because Jhelum river on one side, river Jhelum on one side, on the other hand, river Indus, one hand, on the other hand is river first Jhelum, so this is Indus Jhelum Doab, then between river Indus and Chenab, Indo Chenab Doab, and finally the smaller one, the lower part between Indus and Satalas. Therefore, this extensive largest Doab known as Sindhu Sagar Doab. Sindhu Sagar Doab. Friends, these uh, Doabs formed by these perennial rivers and apart from these perennial rivers there are thousands and thousands of the seasonal rivers which drain in indus satellite plain. When we see the relief features, geomorphic features of indus satellite plain, one can find that indus satellite plain is a Influent plane. Influent planes. It is the kind of plane where the moisture regime, rainfall pattern decreases along the lower parts of the river, along the towards the delta of the river. Therefore, the influent plane comparatively less affected by flats, less new alluvial deposits. So, alluvial deposits are old. So, old alluvials in the river basin known as Bangar. Therefore, intersatellus plane is a Bangar plane. Bangar 
old alluvial soil. So Bhivani Bangar, Rajasthan Bangar, Punjab Bangar, there are extensive Bangar areas in India and Pakistan. The other geomorphic features apart from Doab and Bangar, there are large number of coals, large number of bhoors, dhayas, and tali. These are the hydrogeomorphic features of indus Atlas plain. In the lower part, in the lower part, one can find the delta region. So, but larger area covered with Bangar region. I would like to explain the concept of the influent plane and then related geomorphic features. Friends, as I told you, when the amount of rainfall decreases towards the passage of the river, towards the advancement of the river, when decreases called influent plane, like amount of rainfall where the river Indus, Satlas and the tributaries Jhelum, Chenab, Rabi and Bias are originating, where the rainfall exceeds over 100 centimeter. But as it moves towards west, towards west in western part of India and Pakistan, the amount of rainfall decreases from 125 centimeter to 25 centimeter. Therefore, amount of water decreases. And few rivers which they don't have perennial source of supply of water, they become dry. This kind of channel known as inland channel inland channels, influent plains having large number of inland drainage, inland channel, for example, river Luni, for example, river Ghaghar. So west flowing river or influent channels, therefore, they form influent plain. Khols, Bhurs, Dhaya and Tali, these are specific geomorphic features of the upper part of indus Atlas plain. In the upper part of indus Atlas plain, during monsoon, there are large number of channels draining out. When channels are wet during monsoon period, have running water, and when monsoon is over, thousands and thousands of channels become dry. So these dry channels in upper Indus plain known as coals. These coals are largely characterized with the boulder deposition. And parallel to the coals, there are large amount of boulder deposition which form the boulder levee, boulder levee parallel to the coals, they are known as bhurs. So parallel, parallel to the coals there are boulder levee which is known as bhurs. So large number of coals, large number of bhurs altogether it forms a barren land. That land is not fertile because of dominance of the boulders. And therefore, this kind of land is not suitable for agriculture. But this kind of land are suitable for grazing purposes. So the extensive land comprising thousands and thousands of coals and boors together known as dhaya. So dhaya, locally known as dhand, infertile land. And finally, at the end, they find tali, 
whenever the rivers that the channels become little longer carry more amount of boulders so over 50 kilometer up to 100 kilometer draining out from foothills of the himalayas and large number of boulders get accumulated which create barrier to the flow of water in the channels and the channel stop convert to small lake small pond these small lakes small ponds known as talli friends talli are highly useful for irrigation gauging purposes so these are the hydrogeomorphic features of indo satluj plain friends at the end of the plain in the lower part we'll find the meanders and the oxbow lakes and there you find delta of the river indus at the end at the coast of arabian sea sunyana bay where small delta formed by river indus friends now we'll move to the middle part which is ganga plain river ganga and its tributaries river ganga and its tributaries tributaries from the himalaya and tributaries from the peninsula very interesting the himalayan tributaries and peninsula tributaries together form very high drainage density plain ganga plain is very high drainage density plain some specific features i would like to give you now see on the map you can find the concept of the influent plain and the affluent plain the climatological parameters of ganga plain and the indo satluj plain see the iso heights ranging from 200 cm in the east to 25 cm in the west rivers originating from the western himalaya particularly uttarakhand and himachal pradesh jammu kashmir so rivers draining in the west they are draining from wet area to dry area therefore amount of water decreases and few rivers become dry channel it ends on the land is not able to join the sea so this kind of channel called the dry channels influent channel or inland drainage while the affluent plain is the ganga plain and you can see this river system draining from comparatively less rainfall area to high rainfall area moving from 100 cm to 200 cm so every kilometer the amount of water increasing in the river the both the banks of the river having better distance from each other so the the cross over become lengthy and large amount of water joining by their tributaries therefore this kind of plain having more floods more tributaries more distributaries more flood area having lot of bait region lot of uh, alluvial deposits it form the plain this kind of plain known as affluent plain so ganga plain is a affluent plain indo satluj plain is influent plain so if it is a affluent plain friends the river ganga and the tributaries i would like to mention the names of their 
uh, reverse because the gangetic plane is very high drainage density plane. So river Ganga and river Yamuna drain parallel from Himalaya up to Prayag, Allahabad. From Himalaya to Allahabad, Prayag, these two rivers are parallel and the Yamuna having tributaries like Chambal, Sindh, Betwa and Kain. Chambal, Sindh, Betwa and Kain. Then river Yamuna joins Ganga at Allahabad, Prayag. Hence, Yamuna became the largest tributary of Ganga and interestingly, Yamuna, Yamuna is a Himalayan tributary, but it joins Ganga not from the left bank, rather it joins Ganga from the right bank. Therefore, a major tributary, a first order tributary draining parallel to the main river, draining parallel to the main river is a consequent and draining parallel to the main river this kind of tributary known as Yazoo. So river Yamuna is Yazoo of Ganga. The number of hundreds of tributaries join Yamuna in the Himalayan region and from the south, from the Malwa Plateau, from Bundelkhand Plateau, big rivers join Yamuna and that is river Chambal, Chambal, Sindh, Betwa and Kain. River Chambal, River Sindh, River Ket Betwa and River Kain. These four important rivers join Yamuna and later on Yamuna join Ganga. Among these four peninsular rivers, Plateau River, Chambal, Sindh, Betwa and Kain, River Chambal is the largest tributary of Yamuna. River Chambal having further large number of tributaries join River Chambal. River Chambal, river draining from Aravali join River Yamuna, River Chambal, through Chambal joins Yamuna. River Kali Sindh, River Parbati, Kali Sindh, Parbati join Chambal, Chambal join Yamuna and finally Yamuna joins Ganga. And River Son, River Son which is an antecedent river passing through the Kaimur hill along with its tributaries. Sonabhadra, the river Son joined Ganga from the south. So the major tributaries drainage from south are Chambal, Sindh, Betwa, Kain and Son. And the tributary of the Son river Rihand, river Rihand passing through the Sonabhadra there are major hydropower projects on Sonabhadra in Rihan. While the northern tributaries, northern tributaries are mainly Gomti, Ramganga, Gomti, Ghagra, Gandak and Kosi. Ramganga, Gomti, Ghagra, Gandak and Kosi. Friends, 
these rivers are perennial large extensive himalayan rivers and have developed a large size of dwarfs dwarfs are so extensive in ganga plain and they are highly fertile being affluent in nature and the eastern flowing rivers east flowing rivers in north india having a climatic characteristics of affluent in nature where amount of precipitation amount of precipitation keep on increasing and therefore the amount of water more drainage density keep on increasing in the plain system therefore the first order second order third order tributaries are large in number like river ganga in the headwater region of ganga in the himalayan region there are major headwater rivers which join in the himalayan region and form large triangle which is called prayags at this point i'd like to mention there are five prayags in uttarakhand apart from allahabad prayag there are five prayags in uttarakhand formed by the headwater rivers of the ganga system like sequence wise from altitude around at the height of 1200 meter is the dev prayag dev prayag then ascending height find the dev prayag rudra prayag karna prayag vishnu prayag nand prayag and the finally vishnu prayag so there these five prayags dev prayag rudra prayag karna prayag nand prayag and vishnu prayag so river bhagirathi joint river alaknanda that prayag called dev prayag river mandakini joint river alaknanda that point called rudra prayag river pindari joint river alaknanda called karna prayag river nandaka joint river alaknanda the called nand prayag and finally river dhauli ganga joined alaknanda they call vishnu prayag so very high drainage density even in the headwater region similarly if you come to the plain areas also the drainage density keep on increasing that's why it is affluent plain very high drainage density plain river ghaghara have two major tributaries river ghaghara ghaghara also called saryu saryu where the famous temple of ayodhya is situated river kali which is known as sarada in india it is sarada in nepal it is called kali river kali or sarada join river ghaghara ghaghara form extensive dawa plain by its interbasin intrabasin channels as well as interbasin channels finally river gandak and then river kosi so large number of perennial high drainage density found in the 
gangetic plane and being such a large size of plane are marked by Himalaya in the north, river Aravali in the west and the plateaus in the south, Malwa plateau, Bundelkhand plateau, Bagelkhand plateau, Kaimur hills and Chotanagpur plateau in the south. Friends, the Gangetic plain is so large that it has been divided broadly into three parts. In the west, upper part called Upper Ganga plain, middle part known as Middle Ganga plain and the eastern one lower part called as Lower Ganga plain. So, Upper Ganga plain, Middle Ganga plain and the Lower Ganga plain. So, three major divisions and this is you can coincide with the help of contours and with the help of meridians. You see contours, through the contours you can find that right from Haridwar up to 100 meter means above 100 meter is upper Ganga plain, upper Ganga plain. Friends, it is extended up to 82 degree east meridian. The tributaries right from the Aravali coming from 72 degree east meridian to 82 degree east meridian. This is the largest part of Ganga plain. The relief features you can find in from 200 meter to 100 meter the contour line and meridian line from 72 degree east to 82 degree east is upper Ganga plain. Similarly, middle Ganga plain in the, between the contours of 100 meter to 50 meter and the meridian boundary is 82 degree east to 87 degree east and finally the lower Ganga plain below 50 meter below 50 meter to the delta and the meridian boundary is from 87 degree to 89 degree east. Friends, the geomorphic features of Ganga plain one can find the very high drainage density plains. It is a monotonous plain, very high drainage density means if you travel, if you travel in any part of Ganga plain and specifically in the middle and lower Ganga plain, you can find a small bridge or lower size of bridge within a kilometer. It's very high drainage density plain. And it is monotonous because it is alluvial plain, depositional plain. Therefore, there is no much relief. It's a plain called monotonous plain. It's affluent plain. Because of these features provide large amount of food grains as a grain basket of India and South Asia. Therefore, it is really very, very highly densely populated. This is the most densely populated plain in the world. The basic geomorphic features of the Ganga plain, one can find that the Plains have large number of unbranching drainage. 
large number of unbranching drainage, having a number of bluffs. Upper part in the western part having some bonger area. Because of old alluvials, whenever there is a more amount of water flow during the monsoon, post monsoon, there are a lot of cutting, a lot of slope cut, erosion, the erosion along the bank side, so they find a lot of cliffs and the point bars. Sometimes they develop the ox bull lakes. Then in the middle and lower part of Ganga plain, the major geomorphic features are oxbow lakes, point bars, cliffs, khadar, khadar plain, khadar plain, bait, flood plains, charts and bills. To understand this, I would like to mention from this figure that as soon as Ganga enters from Haridwar, it enters in the plain. There is a change in the flow of water, the drainage gradient gradually decreases because of decrease in the slope. And there are seasonal concentrated rainfall during monsoon. So during monsoon, the more water moves in the lower part, carries a lot of sand and sometimes the sands get deposited as a mounds in the Ganga valley. These mounds of the sands, these mounds of the sands are a specific feature, the large number. These mounds of the sands in the Ganga drainage known as bluffs. So bluffs highly characterized in the upper Ganga plain. And in the upper Ganga plain down to the foothills, of the Sivalik, two specific features of the Ganga plain which are globally known, everyone known about that, formed by erosion and deposition called Bhabar and Tarai. Friends, Bhabar, Bhabar and Tarai are the specific features of Ganga plain because Ganga system have large number of channels in the monsoon. So when the channels bring boulders, so boulders get deposited. So water drains below the boulders. That landscape is called Bhabar, where river disappears. River drains below the boulders. That is called Bhabar region. And towards plain, after Bhabar, river reappears, river reappears and brings fertile land it's called Tarai. Tarai is highly fertile with a large amount of humus along with the water. So Bhabar, Tarai, bluffs are the specific feature of the upper part of Upper Ganga plain. Then further down, you will find Bangar areas like Western Uttar Pradesh, Delhi and CR region has Bangar areas. And after that, find a lot of meanders and oxbow lakes. When meander in the plain areas, river cuts with the bank, the the bank which is affected by erosion known as cliff bank which is sharp edge cliff. On the other hand, on the other band, the curve, the bend area, there is a lot of sand deposits and a very gentle slope. 
that is called point bar. So every meander have two specific bank. One, the eroded bank is cliff bank and depositional bank is point bar. Friends, sometimes the meander neck become closer, then there are neck cutoff and after neck cutoff, river left the meander and formed the new channel. That meander which is left as a lake, now stable water, that is called oxbow lakes. So a lot of oxbow lakes are found in Gangetic Plain. Further down, in the middle to the lower Ganga Plain, where average slope is less than 9 centimeter per kilometer. Friends, if you see the, the average inclination of the slope of the upper Ganga Plain, which is about 24 centimeter per kilometer, it becomes around 12 centimeter per kilometer in the middle Ganga Plain. But coming to the lower Ganga Plain, the average inclination of the slope is between 6 to 9 centimeter per kilometer. Friends, you can understand that 6 to 9 kilometer centimeter per kilometer, the average inclination of the slope, this makes the Ganga Plain a monotonous plain. And in the lower part of Ganga Plain and the middle part of Ganga Plain, apart from the Oxbow Lakes, Meanders, we'll find a lot of Khadar areas. Khadar, new alluvial, new alluvials known as Khadar. And during monsoon, both the banks, water moves out from the river to the surrounding land. It's flood water. It's standing flood water in the field. When flood water is strand in the field, it is known as bait. And once the flood is over, then a lot of new sediments are deposited, new humus are deposited from very fertile land that is called flood plain. So flood plain having the specific feature of cather and bait and large amount of sediments get deposited parallel to the river bank and that is called natural levees. Natural levees are very, very important in Bihar, West Bengal, as some reason, because during the flood season, during monsoon, during flood season, everywhere is water, flood water, stranding water, the bait area, and only natural levees are standing above the water. Friends, these natural levees are used for construction of roads. That's why you could find roads are very much parallel to the channels, to the rivers in Bihar and West Bengal, natural levees. And finally, at the end, Ganga joins Bay of Bengal and forms the big size of this tributary. So like Yamuna is the largest tributary of Ganga. Similarly, River Hooghly, River Hooghly is the largest distributary of Ganga is the largest distributary. River Ganga bifurcates itself in two parts. So main Ganga enters in Bangladesh and the parts of the Ganga as the river Hooghly passing through West Bengal, Kolkata join Ganga Sagar. Therefore, Kolkata city is the delta city. So the land, fertile alluvial land between the two tributaries known as Doab and fertile alluvial plain between the two distributaries known as delta. So that's why delta is triangle shape. It formed in the delta shape, triangle shape, and the waps are rectangular and square shape. 
the lower Ganga plain. So, in the in the lower Ganga plain, Dwaps, the delta, so delta characterized with charts and bills. Friends, upper part of delta which is not inundated by water known as chars. Chars are used for settlement, for uh, uh, agriculture purpose, all that because it is it's not affected by the tidal water or the river water, flood water, chars. And the bills, when the channels become dry, when the channels become dry in the delta, that is called bills. And bills are used for agriculture, for paddy farming, for uh, aquaculture, for pisciculture. Bills are useful in agricultural practices. So, chars and bills. Friends, these are, these are the relief features of Ganga plain and, and Ganga plain is one of the largest fertile alluvial plain in the world. And at the end, at the end is the Brahmaputra plain. Friends, Brahmaputra plains formed by river Brahmaputra and its tributaries, it is a narrow plain. It is around 800 kilometer in the length and hardly 100, 150 kilometer in the width. Brahmaputra plain developed in the ramp valley. It is a ramp valley plain. Ramp valley is a kind of valley which is formed by the folding and faulting together. So, the ramp, the two ramps in the northern part are Himalayan ramps, southern part are the Purvanchal ramp and in between is the fault valley. Now, the fault valley is filled up, filled up by sediments and had formed the plains. River Brahmaputra having very, very high drainage density, very high river drainage density. River Tista coming, Subansiri, Tansiri, there are large number of tributaries from the north and from the south. Friends, Brahmaputra river, because of its very high drainage density and very high erosive capacity, due to erosion, Brahmaputra is the best example of ana branching pattern in the world. And due to ana branching pattern, ana branching nature, river divides itself in two parts, two branches, and again become one. They call ana branching. And because of this ana branching, there are largest river island in the world, which is called Majuli. Majuli is the largest river island in the world and Mazuli having very, very high biodiversity because of its tropical humid climatic regions. Brahmaputra plain largely divided into two parts, upper, upper Brahmaputra plain and the lower Brahmaputra plain. Friends, 94 degree, 94 degree east meridian divides upper Brahmaputra plain and the lower Brahmaputra plain. And, and because of such a high drainage density, both from the left bank river and the right bank rivers, in Assam there is no need for canal, there is no canal irrigation because these channels are so highly densely located that makes the very, very high drainage density plain in the world. Thank you very much. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us a productive session on geohydrology of Great Northern Plains. Dear friends, if you have liked this lecture or if you want to give your feedback or you have any kind of query, then you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. We would love to solve your queries the next time when Dr. B.W. Pandey visits our studio. And for accessing this lecture number of times, we would like to tell you all that very soon we are going to upload this lecture on YouTube so that it becomes easier for you you to see this lecture and afterwards if you have any queries definitely you can mail us with this note we take your leave and uh, i would like to thank dr b w pandey once again for giving his precious time as well as precious inputs to the lecture thank you sir thank, thank you so very much